our uh, um, guest OS, the one we're going to be using in our virtual machine, is going to be a Linux distribution. Okay. All right. So the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to click on the Start button, and we're going to go to All Programs. Okay. In here, you'll see that your Start menu has been um, been organized so that there's an All Classes entry. Oops. My bad. There's a CS entry. It stands for Computer Science. Click on Computer Science. Okay, now you're going to see VMware right here. Okay, so you're going to open VMware. And then you're going to click on VM. Okay. Now all that was was a link to this particular file, this particular folder on the computer. That's all we did. Okay, so that was just a shortcut so we can open this folder. All right. All right, now we're going to move this entire folder. So there's a folder right here. It says Kali Linux 2016. Okay, it has kind of a weird name. And basically all we're gonna do is we're gonna take that and we're gonna drag the entire folder over, stu over to student data D, okay? So re you'll recall, and I'm pausing here over each of the folders so they'll expand. So notice I get down to the CS folder right here, and that's where I'm gonna drop it, okay? The important thing is that you drop it onto student data D. That's the important part. Um, in Windows, when you move things from one partition to another, it's an automatic copy, not a move, okay? So a move is actually two things. It's a copy and a delete, right? So when you move something, you're copying it from one location to another and then deleting, okay? Well, that's not really true. Okay, let me, let me go into further detail since it's a computer science class. Okay, so, so if I'm on the same partition, if I'm on my C drive, and I just move it from my desktop, from my downloads to my desktop. The actual file doesn't move, okay? The, the bits on the disk that are, the file is made up of doesn't move. Only the pointer moves. So the pointer that tells Windows where the file is located, that just points to a new location. The file isn't actually moved, all right? Does that make sense? That's why it takes like that, okay? In this case, we're actually making a copy of all the bits on disk onto the different partition. In this case, the D drive, right? So we call it a drive usually in our computers, right? So C drive, D drive, right? Um, now the C drive has been hidden on this computer just for um, just to make it less confusing for students. Okay, but essentially what we're doing right now is we're copying 10 gigabytes of bits from the CD drive or the C drive over to the D drive. Okay. You'll notice that this, the original stays in place and it's a copy over to the D drive. Okay? All right, so it's going to take a couple minutes. So we're just going to relax and uh, take a look at what's inside the thing we're copying. Okay. So inside of the thing we're copying, you see a couple of different file types. All right? So VDMK. Okay, so all these files right here, all the VD, VMDK files. These are just, um, those are just a virtual disk, okay? In the same way that you have a C drive, this acts identically. It acts as a hard drive for the virtual machine, okay? You don't even know, need to worry about what it is, all right? It's, that's just what it is, all right? The thing that you really want to be concerned about, not concerned about, is this VMX file. And you'll notice that in the file type, it says VM virtual machine configuration, okay? So in a minute, once this gets copied over, that's what we're going to double click to open our, our virtual machine. Okay. All right. It's going slowly. Like this is like in those, like on a play where people take their hands and they like pull them apart. Like, you know, I'm like stretching for time right now while this copies. <laughs> okay. So it's going to continue to copy. We're going to go ahead just for uh, convenience. We're going to go ahead and pause the video. Okay, so uh, we have finished. We finished our uh, our copy. So basically, our um, our virtual machine has been copied over to our D drive. Okay, so if it's in class files, we're going to go to CS. Now remember that the way our computers are set up, the D drive is not erased every time. So essentially, the reason why we copied it over, the one on the C drive is going to be fine every time we restart the computer. It's reset to its original state. Okay. The version you copied over to the D drive will not be reset. That means that any changes that you make will be maintained. They will persist between reboots, all right? So that's the whole point of it, all right? Okay, so in the CS folder, what you should do is just go ahead and create um, a folder that's your name. 
So the easiest way to create a folder in Windows is in the blank space here. Uh, just hit right click, go down to new, click folder, and then you're gonna name it like my name. Like let's say my name is Steve. Okay, then I'm gonna drag that VM that I just put in there into the Steve folder. Okay, so now hopefully anyone else who uses the computer isn't gonna go into Steve's folder because their name isn't Steve, okay? Okay, so let's go ahead and launch the VM and we're going to do a couple things inside the VM. All right, so we're going to open up the folder. Okay, remember I said we have a VM virtual machine here? We're going to go ahead and double click that. Okay, so everybody knows and sees that. We're going to double click it. And in theory, our VM player is going to launch. But it didn't. Oh, it did. We want to give it a second. In theory, when we double click that, it should launch. Okay, in the past, I've had to kind of, now, to be honest with you, I don't really know um, um, if it's necessary. In the past, I've had to open VMware Player at the same time. Okay, so what I'm going to go ahead and do here. Do you notice when I click this VMX file, it says I get this option up here that says open in VMware player. And I'm gonna go do the drop down and I'm gonna click that. Okay. Oh, here we go. Whoops, I missed it. Okay, now look down at the bottom of your screen here. Okay, and if you see, we have this little icon. That's the VMware icon. It's this little yellow puzzle piece. Okay, and you should see, if you click on that, you should see this screen, okay? Because this is a free product, um, VMware will give you this every time we start up. Now, the first time I did put in my real email address, I don't think they need my real email address like every time, and it's kind of long to type out. So I go ahead and put in test at test.com, okay? And then I click continue, and then I click finish. Okay. So this is the VMware player that starts up. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, and just go, any message that comes up here, just click on the do not show again and click okay. It's gonna ask you if you moved it or copied it. Okay, go ahead and put I copied it. That's important, definitely click I copied it. Okay, okay. click don't show again, click okay. Don't show again, click OK. All right, so this is the boot screen. Um, it's gonna click software updates, put remind me later. Okay, that what you just saw was the boot screen for the Linux distribution. Okay, so now what we see here in the middle of our screen is just like if you turned on a computer, it's identical. Okay, if we installed this operating system on a physical computer, this is what you would see on the screen when it starts up, all right? Okay, just go ahead and wait for this. It's gonna seem like you need to type something in, but you don't. I'm gonna go ahead and adjust my this uh, taskbar down here to, to auto hide. So I'm gonna right click on it, go to properties and check auto hide. I'm gonna click okay. That's just to help you see it. You don't have to do that. Okay, so now we are finally into the, um, the operating system, all right? So basically we have this username. The username is uh, R-O-O-T, is root. Okay, root is like the word for administrator, but in Linux. In Linux, you know, in, in Windows we have admin or administrator. In Linux we have a root, R-O-O-T. The password is really clever in, in Kali Linux. It's Tor, it's root backwards, okay, T-O-O-R. That was not set by me. That's like a standard thing. Oh, 
Okay, so now we're inside the, um, the actual operating system. Notice it looks a lot like Windows or Mac, right? It's just you got a pointer, you got a toolbar along the side. This is a lot like the Mac toolbar or Windows taskbar. Um, you got your, you know, you got your um, uh, network connections up here. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and switch into full screen mode. Okay, so that's this little icon right here. If you hover over it and just sit there, it'll go enter full screen mode. All right, so now we're in full screen mode. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is um, notice that it immediately went to this uh, kind of full, like really full screen, right? Uh, which is good. Okay, so it, it uh, fills up my entire screen, which is great. Um, and we're gonna go ahead and just, uh, just do a couple things here. Okay, so in order to start programming in C, we need a couple of items, all right? Um, notice that we are connected to the internet. So the, the virtual machine basically plugs into the host operating system and it will use the Wi-Fi that you're already connected to on your laptop, okay, or on your computer. If your host computer all of a sudden wasn't connected to the internet, then the virtual operating system won't be connected either, okay? Um, the browser in here is called Ice Weasel, okay? You're gonna, you're gonna find that because this is open source software, like stuff is named not marketable names like no one is going to buy the ice weasel browser right but, but ice weasel it is because it is open source okay so here i can basically go in i can go to uh, google okay so now i'm at google.com i can type in test right okay so i'm basically i can go and browse the web just like i'm on an operating system right okay which i am i'm on an operating system but I'm just like I'm on Windows. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and close that. The couple of things we need to do right off the bat on here is we need to go ahead and launch a terminal. Okay, so that's this uh, little black square over here. And what I'm gonna go type in is I'm gonna type in apt-get, so that's apt-get. Okay, and I'm gonna type apt-get space, and I'm gonna type in um, update. Okay. So what this is, is, is uh, Linux has something that's just like the App Store, okay? It's exactly the same thing. It's just like, like, just like your, 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 when your iPhone or an Android phone has an App Store where they send out updates for software. Linux has that too, and this is how we say, hey, go get any latest software updates, okay? That's all I'm gonna do, app get update. I'm gonna hit enter. And so now it's gonna start to connect to these uh, this software update sites. in theory. Okay, it looks like we have a network connection issue, so we're gonna go ahead and do control C. Whenever you're in a terminal and, and you get in trouble, basically you do control C. To copy and paste, it's, you know, you do control C and control V for copy and paste. It's control shift V and control shift C, okay? Same, same commands. So we're gonna go ahead and just try to, uh, try to install what we're gonna install. So we're gonna put apt-get space install and we're gonna type build, B-U-I-L-D, uh, dash essentials. I'm horrible at spelling. Okay, build essentials already the newest package, so that's great. All right, guys, so essentially, we just double checked that, uh, that the operating system is all set. Um, this app get update uh, should have run just fine, but it turns out that it, we didn't need it to run anyways, so there's probably some issue with the networking on it, which we'll fix later, okay?
All right, so this to this is to the point which you need to get this. Okay, so just get on there, open up the terminal, do apt get uh, update, see if it runs. If not, it's fine. Uh, type in apt get uh, space install space build essential and um, build dash essential and uh, and just uh, see if it needs to update. All right. Okay, guys. So that is it.